what's the SDR role really about? Yeah. So the SDR role really is about um, you're you're basically you're the you're at the beginning part of the sales funnel, right? So for people that are new to let's say B two B sales and your only um, your only experience or exposure to sales is is B two C sales, it's a little different. So B two C sales is business to consumer. So that's when you um, like when most people think about sales, they think about B two C sales roles. So that'd be like you know car sales, insurance sales, cell phone sales, for example. So uh, there's a sales rep and they're selling to an individual. Uh, B2B sales is, this is what we're talking about here, professional sales, uh, software sales being kind of, you know, one of the umbrellas there. So it's it's a much more complex sales process. There's multiple people involved on the, on the customer side and these sales processes take a longer time too. So you're gonna have a team of individuals that are gonna help close these deals. So the sales development representative is is one of them. So they're the typically going to be the first person that's going to be reaching out to a prospective customer or or prospect. Um, they usually do a mix of qualifying both like inbound leads. So a prospective customer might fill out like a form or they might attend a webinar uh, and they want to learn more about the product offering. Um, or you might get like a, a lead from uh, from from marketing, for example, yeah, from an event or something that this individual attended. Um, the other thing that their SDRs are going to do as well is they're going to be working off of a list of companies that would potentially be a good fit for the product, and they're going to go ahead and and be doing calls, emails, and LinkedIn messages out to those individuals to go ahead and try to get a conversation going. So they're they're at the beginning of the sales process. They're generating interest. And then they're and then they're handing off the prospect if they've shown interest to the account executive, and they're the one that's going to take it from there and hopefully close the deal. And uh, really, this this role allows the account executives to kind of um, better manage their time, right? So instead of ha them having to prospect all the time, they're instead they're focusing on actually closing deals and progressing them because that's a whole whole other workload itself. Yeah, that's a good point is like the purpose of the SDR role is to get more conversations going and increase the effectiveness of the account executive and, and lead to more revenue at the end of the day, which is the lifeblood of a business. What's the career trajectory of an SDR, right? Like what's the next step? Is there flexibility in where you can go from the SDR role? Like would love your your thoughts. Sure. Yeah. So uh, so the next step for the for the career path. So the most obvious next step is be, you know being uh, promoted to an account executive so that's the that's the closing role so i'd say like the vast majority of sdrs um that's the path they want to get into um most companies so there's a whole i guess separate topic in terms of evaluating which company you want to join as an sdr but the the well-run ones they do a lot of promoting from within so they'll they'll promote like the top performing SDR BDRs into these closing account executive roles. Um, so it is a little bit of a funnel uh, where you're going to have a lot more SDR BDRs than you do have AE. So not everyone is going to, you know, get promoted up into that path. Some people will actually stay as an SDR BDR like that is becoming an option that's more and more prevalent. They're real, you know, companies are realizing that some people enjoy that role more so than the AE role. So they're allowing people to stay in that role you know, for their, for their career, maybe becoming like an expert in like up on prospecting and then, you know, managing and building out an SDR team as well. Um, and then like the third option is, is actually just going into an adjacent role. Um, so I, me, you know, me and you, we, we know actually a, a good number of our colleagues that we used to work with in sales at Google, for example, and they moved on to other parts of the company. Like one of them, I think went into like the YouTube team. Another one went into, I think the, uh, the, the VR team and stuff. Yeah, exactly. So lots, lots of different options there. Um, the great thing is a lot of the skills that you learn in sales are transferable. So even if you're not going to be in a customer facing sales role, as you move into like any corporate role, you're going to be doing actually a lot of selling internally. So these skills are all like super, super transferable. And for like the really big organizations, they, usually give you a good amount of like internal mobility too. Yeah. That's why I get so excited about the SDR role is because it's the greatest way to lower the barrier to entry to an amazing company and mm. get skills that regardless of if you stay in the sales path, those skills will serve you in anything you do. Right. Cause yep. like Dan Pink has that book to sell as human. 
where he talks about all the non-sales selling roles. Like if you're a product leader, you're an HR, and especially entrepreneurs, they're selling all the time. And so I've also seen uh, Tom folks like back in my Oracle days that went became analysts. They were super analytical, but they did well as an SDR and network so they could move to that um, position or move into marketing. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'll yeah, I was going to say, and then, and then I've, I've also known some people too that they decide they want to be you know more technical. For example, so they might move into like a sales engineering role or a solutions architect role. Um, so yeah, ton of different options there for sure. Let's talk money for a bit, right? Like, what based on the data is the typical like base salary and on target earnings? That's one question. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'll hold off. I have a follow up, but what's what's typically expected? Sure. Yeah. So if we're talking about like the entry level, you know, SDR, BDR. What I've, what I've been seeing through my like network is, and also through different data sources like Repu, um, nowadays companies are offering between like 60 to 100K OTE. I've seen a, a couple that have been uh, a little bit higher at like 105 or 110K OTE. These are for, that's for individuals with basically zero experience um, moving into the role. And of course the, the pay also depends a bit based on the company and also based on location as well. And uh, for people that aren't familiar, OTE, that's on target earnings. That's how much you would earn if you hit like 100% of your, your goal or 100% of your, your quota or the targets that were set by your manager. As an SDR, BDR, usually you're on like a 80-20 or a 70-30 split. So 80 to 70% of that number is going to be a guaranteed base salary that's you know paid out you know, either monthly or biweekly. And then the rest and the bonus depending on the company, you either get that, you know, on a, on a monthly basis, or you might get that on a, on a quarterly basis or even semi-annual basis. It kind of depends on the company there, but that's one of the big differentiators with, with like tech sales or software sales is that this role um, is not like a commission only sales role. Right. So it's, it's, that's one of like the, the bigger differences is you actually do have a, a pretty substantial base salary and there's, there's a variety of different reasons why they, uh, why they do that. And it's cool that you have an upside where you can work harder and smarter and make more money. Mm -hmm. As an SDR, you can hit a bonus, but then you go to AE, which is a whole different story we could talk about. You could maybe have uncapped commission. And I know you've had some big time W-2, uh, yeah. you know, uh, not checks, but well, I guess so. Yeah. But mm -hmm. um, so so in order, let's talk about hitting the bonus as an SDR. What goes into like the metrics that you need to hit? Like how how is success measured? And I could put words in your mouth, but I want to hear from you. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is going to vary quite a bit from sales org to sales org. So, this is one of the questions that I always tell my uh, mentees to go ahead and ask during the interview process. Is you know asking you know the sales manager how is success actually measured? So, I've seen a lot of different sales plans for SDRs. Some of them they only look at um, number of like opportunities generated. Other ones they look at you know meetings set for the AEs. Um, sometimes they even have a combination of meeting set plus like a percentage of revenue from, from deals closed. So it's going to, it's going to vary quite a bit. It's going to depend on also like what product you're selling. So some products are more transactional, smaller deal values, like, you know, you know, 10 to 20 K deals that could, that can close in like 30 to 45 days. That's going to be very different than, you know, a complex enterprise, you know, software platform that has, you know, uh, you know, six to 12 month uh, deal cycle. So in, in those cases, it's a little harder to measure the success of the SDR BDRs. You don't necessarily want the SDRs and the BDRs to be waiting around 12 months to get paid, you know, on a deal that they, that they source that potentially may or may not even get closed. Yeah, that's a good point, man. Um, we could dig into the skill set required to like actually hit your numbers. I would like to do that. But also I like before going into that, um, how about equity? Are you seeing like it, it's certain companies with a big enterprise, you get RSUs or a startup that SDRs are able to come in in their first role and actually negotiate some equity as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So equity is, uh, so this is going to, this answer is going to depend on the company. So, you know, some private companies don't give out equity or they don't give out equity to sales. It just kind of depends on the culture there. Uh, but in general, um, for most of the tech companies, they do give equity in one way or another, like the publicly traded companies, a lot of times they do it as like RSUs or stock grants. So you, you get, you know, a, a, a vesting, a, a vested amount of stock. So for example, when I joined Google, I think it was like, this was before the split. 
but in my package it was like 160 160 shares which at the time i think it was like 950 a share for for google and it was vested over four years so they basically gave me part of my pay package was you know 160k in google stock and it was paid on a on a i guess it was a i think it was a, a yearly basis so it was like there's a vesting schedule meaning in this case you didn't get any of it until you worked there for a year and then after that i think it was actually a quarterly vesting so then after that i got a quarter of the yearly amount and it was just kind of you know added to my uh, brokerage account there how about that you know 160k in stock mm -hmm. and google's not a bad stock and if you performed well didn't you have a chance to kind of refresh and negotiate over time even higher more stock yep yep exactly so yeah like the the big tech companies and most like the bigger startups too they do like an annual or semi-annual uh review process so you do a, a performance review it's a combination of your manager's feedback as well as like a self-performance review and then based on that and based on your sales performance you you know you can be eligible for you know base raise increases level increases and then like additional stock as well too because they if they if they give you stock up front uh when you first join then they usually have a mechanism to give you more stock on a yearly basis because they want to avoid a situation where let's say if you have like a four-year stock grant and you've been there for four years uh if they don't give you more stock then you know year five you're gonna have a pretty significant decrease in pace so they try to try to avoid that